Morning everyone, welcome to the Traders Lab. I am your host Tom B. Thanks for being here today and uh, we have some interesting things to share so hopefully you'll find the time we visit together useful. If you're in YouTube, welcome uh, and be sure to click the cogwheel, make sure you're in 1080p uh, so you can kind of see what's going on clearly. If you have questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, please post them in the chat. Um, and in addition, uh, since I'm running multiple computers and streams, it takes me some time uh, to get to the chats to try to answer questions, so please be patient with that. Uh, this program is about understanding and learning uh, market mechanics. Um, it is not indicator-based. However, if you use indicators, uh, you might want to consider how you might best deploy them. Uh, in the but a understanding of market mechanics might assist you with that. Uh, in my evolution as a trader, I do not use any indicators, but it doesn't mean that uh, that can't be done. It's really a function of understanding what's going on in the market, and a one size doesn't fit all. And if you do use indicators, if you are constantly tweaking and tuning uh, the issue and then going into multiple time frames, uh, what you will find is the reason this happens is because we have a random environment. In other words, rotations are random. While in a higher time frame, we might have a sense of where the market might underline go yes. we don't know where it will go or how it might if it even does get there so that's the the fallacy of indicators uh, is really always trying to tune uh, and that is really an optimization effort and that creates randomness so uh, we're going to talk about market mechanics so you can have a better understanding of how the market actually works and that is what this stream is about and then if you can integrate your current process and align it with what you might see here uh, you may or may not get a better outcome and that's up to your trade plan so this is about market mechanics integrating book map with auction market theory and volume profile which is the way we uh, uh, the interaction of buyers and sellers is represented. Uh, the volume profile, so you understand, basically just shows us price and volume. And if you stop and think about it, a, a, uh, the market is the intersection of the buyers and the sellers, whether it's just one or many. And based on that interaction, we can determine or at least ascertain potentially what the intent might be. And this takes place in all time frames. So it's not about scalping. It's about attempting to gain alignment with higher time frame participants. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, general disclosure, all book map limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice or recommendations. Live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Risk disclosure. Trading futures equities and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results and please remember this is not a trade calling room. This is strictly for educational purposes only. Is anyone having an issue with my audio? Okay, thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Jamie and uh, Trade Futures. Thank you for being here. Uh, by the way, we're having a trader roundtable this Saturday from 10 a to 12 p Eastern Standard Time, and all of you are welcome to come to the Discord uh, Trader Lab. Um, you don't have to be a Bookmap subscriber, and I'll post some information, or you can just go to uh, bookmap.com and just where it says Join Discord, click on that. 
register and then come to the trader lab tomorrow anytime also in addition to this stream i do uh narrate uh through audio uh, in the trader lab uh during the day as market conditions warrant um, and today was very interesting of course right is there anything that's not interesting every day in the market think about that i think that's why we show up every day what will the market do so here's our process and I always do this because I know there's a lot of traders that are new and I want you to understand what we are doing uh, and why I think uh, order flow and uh, market mechanics are so important for a trader to understand uh, primarily it's auction market theory now there's various tools but auction market theory is the basis that all trade is built on and if you think about it uh, it was Wyckoff, and I, I don't even remember, this had to be really early on, uh, who really started putting together volume and um, price. It was his theories on volume that created really the evolution of auction market theory. And if you think about it, when you go to the store, you participate in an auction. And, and I, when I think of these processes, I think it's easier for us uh, to relate them to other experiences that we have in our life that we bring to trading. So it's not like thinking of this as some esoteric process, you know, um, you know, an off-planet, outer-world experience. It's something you're already doing. So you don't have to, quote, learn something new. You just have to take your experience and bring it here. Some of those experiences don't fit in trading. That's a different, con you know, a different uh, conversation. But the auction is a generic process. Hold on, I've got to have a position here. I got to deal with. <laughs> Hold on. Sorry, guys. You know how it is. Let me uh, just get in here. Okay. Sorry, auction market theory. Um, auction market theory is basically buy low, sell high. I know you're going to say, wow, that's brilliant. But let's talk about buy low, sell high. Um, let's go to the supermarket. Let's all take a little walk in the supermarket. And let's go to the, uh, let's try something different today. Um, let's buy a, a can of soup. You're going to say, but it's summer. What do I need soup for? But can of soup. And we go and we see that can of soup, and it's on sale. Normally, let's just say it's a dollar a can. I know, pretty good soup, right? Uh, but it's on sale for 75 cents. If you perceive the dollar as the re and that's the retail price, and you're willing to pay a dollar, right? But for some reason, that seller wants more volume, so they lower their price. Remember, the seller has to lower the price to create and motivate that buyer you buy it at 75 cents you go wow that's really good you know so you buy it. maybe you buy two right then the sellers go wow we've got some good demand down there let's raise our price and they raise their price back up now it comes back to retail and at re so you know what happens at retail think about it if there's a price that the participants uh, perceive as fair it creates high volume right because that's where everybody's willing to interact that creates something in the auction that we call high volume node because that's just retail makes sense doesn't it now there's another part of this let's say those sellers go you know I think we can get more let's raise our price now you go to the store and you go you know dollar ten dollar fifteen okay I'll pay it dollar twenty a little less buyers are willing to pay a dollar twenty a dollar twenty five basically we've run out of buyers okay that's the auction so now what do those sellers do well they lower the price to attract those buyers back until we get back to a fair price and let's just assume we're back at a dollar which is the retail price and again that volume that interaction of price and volume takes place retail does that make sense think about it pretty simple right Oh, Ron, I see uh, you're reading Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. That was the first book I read. I, when I first came into the business, uh, 
actually I hadn't even gotten into the business I was thinking about it uh, and this is back in the stone age you know you had to use a, a stone and a chisel and um, that was the first thing I read reminiscence of a stock operator and it just uh, was so exciting to read about Jesse Livermore and uh, in the early 1900s and just and a lot of things haven't changed since then and I really recommend everybody read that book um, it's not so much how to trade it's about behavior uh, and there's many many lessons in it but I found it really motivating and it helped me decide to uh, get involved in the trading and, and create a career so volume profile what is this you probably heard about it and you might think it's very confusing I will tell you when I first got involved with volume profile was in the mid 1980s and I actually learned it from the guy who who uh, created it which uh, Peter Stottlemyer and I went to something called the market logic school um, which you know where he actually taught the class and I learned it from the guy and I uh, and I will tell you when I first got involved with it and CQG was the first platform, so you know, that actually had market profile. Um, I started working with it, and it took me a while because I kind of came from system design um, and indicators, you know, so uh, it was really a different way to kind of view the market. Um, I kind of had a sense of auction, but not a complete understanding. And I, but when I saw the volume profile, I thought I'd landed on, you know, the moon and it took me a long time to integrate it and I was not successful with it initially uh, because it coming from indicators I was very much in a and I'm sharing this and we're going to take time today so don't worry about it um, because my trades are already doing their thing so I don't really need to be too well, let me look mind to store too closely so um, you know at first uh, I was using quote kind of a rigid view it's going to do this it's going to do that uh, because that's kind of how it was presented to me you know that it's going to go this far based on this and that you know all those little rule statistical things that I think initially we lean on and in a way we're looking even if it's not conscious for certainty and in reality there's nothing that's certain in the financial market because it changes and the auction so you understand as it's represented is really an attempt to find a fair price and what is more interesting I think about the whole thing is that it does it in all time well time frames uh, which is a misnomer there's no time in the market uh, we all come from you know five minute two minute three minute or this or that or range or this or right right I mean we kind of slice and dice the mark up and mark it up into some kind of order but we are imposing the order on the market we created the clock remember the sundial we created the clock the market does not think or care about the clock except the open the close maybe the EU that kind of thing you know ETH things of that nature but otherwise it's the volume in the participant behavior that really creates the market so time is not an element so but time frame as you guys and even me back when relate to it uh, in the sense of how the market operates let's change that to fractal fractal is like those Russian dolls you know the little one inside the next one inside the next one so this is not about scalping I know a lot of us think gee you're looking at shorter time frames yeah I am but I'm gonna show you and today I'm gonna give you some idea of how this might work how we integrate the shortest time frame or auction between those buyers and sellers in microstructure to attempt to align ourselves with higher time frames because the opportunity as I see it is to align and catch a ride you know with a higher larger rotation but any time you interact with the market you're doing it in a let's say inner day or a more shorter term structure in my opinion something to think about now the other element about this and this is one of the more difficult areas for all traders and it was for me is context context is for example we've been going up right I 
I'm just reading a little bit in the chat. Uh, context says we we're going no, north, no, and if you guys no. know, we had a target of 4016 that I've been talking about for I don't know how long weeks, right? And if you notice, and I'm gonna in quotes, coincidentally, the high of the day is 4016, and I think it's 25, right? So we'll talk about that today. I think you're going to find it interesting. And you might even get an understanding of why I'm a fan of auction market theory and the volume profile. So context. And now how context changes can also impact um, your opportunity in the market and also how to participate. And I'm going to show you some of that today. Uh, a little more than usual because today is really interesting. It's an event. Okay, so we'll look at that. And the tool, of course, to interact in the market, and the one I use, is an order flow tool called Bookmap. And, and really what big Bookmap is for me is the tip of the spear. It's kind of how, where I can get into the microstructure, I can read order flow, I can see stops, I can see icebergs, I can see absorption, I can see all the, the nitty-gritty, if you will, in the more shorter-term structures, and that helps me understand the developing structure in the interday time frame and microstructures based on the auction where I might engage uh, and triggers to engage potentially in the market. And it helps me really get into the minutia because what I'm going to execute, isn't it, and when you execute, isn't it come down to a risk reward parameter? What is the minimum risk you can quantify that fits your trade plan to go on to potentially higher time frame targets, whatever that is per your trade plan. So that's how I look at it. And that's my process that I'll be sharing with you. I hope you find it useful. So I want to show you a little something here that I just kind of threw together. And now don't let this, uh, you know, don't bang your head on the table when you see this. And I just kind of, now this looks very confusing to you. All this is, so you know, and it's, is whenever there's a consolidation, it's an auction. So you see a lot of lines and things. I don't want you to think too much about it at the moment. What's more important is what happened over here. You see this chop, 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 chop. Trading 101, it's a consolidation. Now, I couldn't fit it all on the screen because I want to put the main issue on the screen. If you remember, and I can't get all of this in here, we had an area at 38.57. We are big chop, chop, chop. So in a higher time frame, and let's call this a higher time frame, it was a big consolidation, right? We had fallen out and gapped lower. If you guys remember this day, in fact, June 9th, we basically got short against up here, and our target was down here. Now, I want you to know, it's all random. Certainly, I have nothing to do with it. It's really the participants. But this 4016.25 existed from a previous consolidation, and this brown line represents... Let me see if I can get this a little clearer for you, I hope. What's called the high volume. Remember the auction, right? So this is where it was retail in a previous location. Now I just put through this together because this just, you know, we hit our target today. So, you know, be patient. Um, and then we fell out of this consolidation. It's a breakout. You guys know breakouts, right? But this was the next level where retail. Then we gapped away from it. This was the gap. So then it left the gap, and we moved lower, sold off, and then we went into the chopateria. And all this is is a consolidation in a bigger, higher time frame. Now here's the other pieces. Inside of the consolidation are other consolidations, right? Fractal. Remember the word fractal. So when these two days overlap, as an example, that's an auction, and what it is is where's too high, where's too low, you see. And inside of this auction is the volume. And with a volume profile, we can actually see where the highest volume is taking place and where it's too low. In other words, remember, buyer, I'm not. 
you know, I'm not up here. I'm not paying that. Forget it. Hey, it's on sale down here. So in this two-day behavior, and this is just an example, there was a fight between the buyers and the sellers. This is on sale, and they perceive value in this two days here. So, and you'll notice we broke lower, and let's just look what happened when we came back up. This day right here, this red bar, hit that on the nose. So the buyers, because we went down, what did it say? This retail price was too high. This is how the auction works. And remember, I, and it's not that it's always too high or too low. It's in the per current perception of the participants. So if you break away from high volume, remember retail, and in these two days, these guys said, yeah, even though they auctioned both sides, too high, too low, they agreed in this two days. This was the fair price. In these three days, these guys, too high, too low, this was where the high volume was, the fair price. We auctioned it again, too high, too low, the fair price. We break down, and I'm just showing you one little element. We come back. Where do we come back to exactly? The fair price. Too high, we're out of here. Boom, we come back down. We don't quite get to this fair price, this auction. It's too low. Where do we come back? See? And then we blow through here. So we couldn't get back to this fair price. So that's saying that was too low. Now remember, it's an auction. Buyers can say, I'm not waiting. I think the price is going higher, and we get a trend configuration. That's a big update. We just had that a couple days ago, right? So now what? Well, let's go back here. 4016. This is the thin air. This was the gap, which I think I've been speaking about this for quite a while. And this was the target. Price check in the big aisle. I hope you find that useful. Now, the past two days... We auctioned, and now we know we're in up, up in the gap, right? So now we know that, uh, let's just say, the lay of the land is potentially to go higher, right? Now, I want you guys to understand that nobody knows what the market's going to do. But what I find, based on the auction, is what it might do. And when you understand auction market theory, which is the basis, the basis of all interaction between a buyer and seller in any marketplace, and that's the gas station, that's the supermarket, you know, wherever there's liquidity, that interaction, whether it's one buyer or seller who set a price and a value and agree, or many, and in the financial market there's many, that gives you an indication. Now, if we're buyers, I don't know about you, I want to buy on sale. You know, I'm a shopper, aren't you? Hey, if it gets really high, it shuts off my buying. But here was a price that was unfair. So I call these price check in aisle three. Do you ever hear him say that in the supermarket? Now, when I talk about fractals and I try to share a concept of a fractal, this auction is happening in all time frames. That's why this 4016 was my target. Now, I have to tell you, I had no idea and I accept the randomness because just like over here, we didn't get back to it. In other words, the buyers came for it aggressively, which created the trend day, you see. Here, the sellers could have come for it aggressively, and we could miss it. There's also the possibility, because this is trading, that we could go through it, see. So all that's possible. But for me, the target was here. And then it's, what's the reaction? Does that make sense? This is June 9th, by the way, guys, so you know the date, all right? And we also were short on this day, if you guys remember that, if you were following the stream, and this was the target. And if you think I know it's going to do it, please. <laughs> I don't.
But what I know is what it might do. That's the best you got in trading, in my opinion, is maybe. Please take some notes, write that down. Maybe. Because if you operate in maybe, uh, you're going to be mentally in a better place to accept the randomness of trading. Because it is random in the sense of will it do it? How will it do it? When will it do it? All that is maybe, isn't it? So that's maybe. So now you got maybe. So what is the potential here, by the way? Now the market, 39.6750 retail in these two days. Where do you think my, not a recommendation, where do you think my target is for my current short? Huh. Let's take a guess. And that's not a trade recommendation, by the way. I just trade the auction. I don't know anything, right? Does that make sense? Sixty-seven fifty. Losing my mind. Where are we anyway here? Hold on a second. I just gotta move some things around please bear with now remember this is like horseshoes and hand grenades there's no precision in the market at best it's maybe hold on sorry guys I gotta do a little uh, maintenance here yeah okay can you guys see what's going on does it make sense do you see this? Now, I did this this morning, and this was here. This is the auction. So in this two days, right here, the high volume or retail price, now you had, se you had sellers here, you had buyers down here. This is all this is going on. And they interacted. Now today, And now we extended today for the next level up here. Is it logical? It might come down to 67.50. Is everybody tracking? How about to 67.50? Can you see how it's if this, then that, if not, then what? If we get here and we don't get through, then the market starts rotating, the configuration is trading. And I'm going to show you this in more microstructure. Then what is the potential? This was the fairest price retail at 67.50. Retail at 16.25. Too high. Where's the last fair price? 67.50. Target. Flat. Everybody tracking. And these are not trade recommendations. Is this useful? This is auction market theory. So this is why I do what I do. Now, any questions before I move on? The orange lines here are called volume point of control. And, what, and it's just another term for the highest volume in th this two days. So all these mean something, all this little stuff. But basically, you see the bell curve. That's called the distribution. Inside of this, there's other little distributions. And they're all giving you information. But for these two days, and when we talk about higher time frame, I'm attempting to get aligned with higher time frames, but I use micro time frames to participate. And I'm going to go into that in a little bit, but I want to make sure everybody understands what this is. This is the highest time volume, remember retail, for these participants. So where the highest volume is, is where the most transactions took place, just like in your store, right? Is everybody aligned before I move on? Okay, let's move on. Thanks for your patience with this. If you have a question, post it before I uh, go on to something else. I do have some other things to show you, but let's get over here. Whoa. 
What's going on here? This is when you say, please book map be open. <laughs> okay. Now, one of the things that I think is r rather confusing, this was, see, uh, this is our target in here, right? So, for me, uh, that was an important area to observe. And remember, there's no trade recommendations here. And for those of you who are in YouTube, I want, I'm, want to invite you to our Trader Roundtable tomorrow, and I'll post how you can do that again. And also, uh, just so you know, when I'm not live streaming, I do drop in uh, to the Trader Lab and do a little audio updates and, you know, little things like that. Okay. So, let's see if we can get back here. I'm going to try to do this and my computer gets really annoyed, you know. So just please be patient while I get back. When do we make that high? And I just want to get up towards the high of the day and I want to show you the change. And I'm also going to show you some triggering structures. That's fun. And also, why a potential short? Huh. You're going to go, really? And where? And why? Because you might say, how do you get short? Well, I think you'll find it really interesting. Where did we make that high? Hold on, guys. i got to go look. Um... I just have to look at the clock, you know, because I get lost here um, since I kind of am not looking what happened. I'm more involved in what is happening at the moment. So give me a moment. I'm just scrolling. Okay. So that was around, okay, just before 9 a.m. All right. I hope you're going to find this useful. If it's not, you know, let me know. Um, You see microcomposite VPOC, that's what it's called. That was our target, and it's been sitting here forever. Um, now, I don't pick the high. I haven't figured that out yet. But I do use targets. So for the longs, the targets are right in here, you know, a little bit above, ahead, I should say. You know, you see this here? So this is the target. Now, there's no way to know that that's the high of the day, so don't think I know. I don't know. I see this, and I go, well, that's interesting. And then the thing that can happen from here is a test or not, or just straight south of the border. So let's look and see, because I don't remember any of this. Long time ago, it seems, right? So I have nothing to do. Now, it's not unreasonable to me. Let me turn down this other audio here. It's not unreasonable to me uh, for profit taking, right? Especially because we hit a key level right here. So not unreasonable. And how do we know what the market's going to do? I want you to know. No way to know. So if you know, if you were looking at this to get out, and then it does this to you, uh, that's life. You know. Uh, how about this? It only gets this high and then reverses. That's life. That's trading. So we don't know. So don't think anybody knows. So, and I certainly don't. I just want you to understand that this is trading, and it's random in the nature of what it might do. The market could come down. 40 points and come back here later or never um, so I'm just saying so we don't know any of that but this was our target there you got it now we come back and this is pretty good selling right you can see it so let's go look what's happening I'm gonna try to walk you through this 
and I was narrating this in our trader lab uh, I don't know about right here. I think I, I talked about the target, but then it was the context change. Remember context? So this is one of those areas where as a trader, we need to recognize change because I can see, and I know from my own experience, that I would keep thinking it's going up, it's going up. Why? Because I didn't have the auction. I didn't understand why it might come to a level and then not go any further, which is, right, possible, correct? So... Hold on one second here. Managing the store, if you know what I mean. Okay. Um, so, this is called the volume point of control. This yellow line. Let me explain. Now, you saw the target at 4016, right? That was that orange line. This is really the same thing, but it's in the developing daily time frame. Remember, fractal? So, this is our developing time frame. And what you're seeing here is the volume in price. Remember the auction. What's fair? What's unfair? And the market is going to continually try to find a fair price in all of these consolidations. And what a consolidation is, is the interaction between a buyer and a seller. Oh, it's on sale. I like this. I'm not paying that. Yeah, but this is a good deal down here. Well, I'm not paying that. And that's what a consolidation becomes. And we see that in the auction with these rotations. Isn't that what a consolidation is? Rotate, rotate. Well, inside of a consolidation is retail. And retail is represented where the most volume takes place, right? Remember your, your soup? Uh, so, in this little auction, and that's all this is, this auction, and it's basically this chop chop over here. This is what it looks like. Chop, chop, chop. Oh, it's on sale. I'm not paying that. See, that kind of thing. And inside of that is the volume. And we can see it, you know, over here. And we can see it like over here. This is the same. This is all the volume for the day so far. And this is only what's visible on the chart. So what this lets me do, the chart volume profile, I can now isolate microstructures. And this is how I use it to kind of see inside. I'm going to turn this off. This is uh, shows us the, it's called the uh, liquidity marker, and it shows me the adds and pulls. It's very nice. It works with the heat map. So you know what the heat map is. This is showing me the order book and the changes. So as the it gets added and pulled, this will get dark if there's a lot of orders here, relative, see here, relative to what's around it. And as the there's less, it's darker, you know, less color and as it gets uh, but here they pulled it see or they traded I think I don't know but I'm going to take that off so just so I want you to be able to see it clearly liquidity marker it's called and this others if you're not familiar these are icebergs sellers those are icebergs and these are stops the green are buy stops the red are sell stops Okay, and primarily we are the guys, the retail traders who use stops. So let's look. Volume point of control. This is like retail, right? Your soup, dollar. Volume shifts up. Retail. So watch what happens. Let's just start looking at it. Yesterday's high. Overnight high, the open. Okay? So you're with me, right? We're going to go incrementally, and I'm taking my time here. I, you know, you know I kind of uh, vary it from day to day. Sometimes now I'm just jumping into real time. But this is such a significant event. I, I really think we need to be uh, looking at it, you know? You like how we got to the 67 or whatever it was, 69.50? So, retail, watch, market volume moves higher. What that is saying in all of this, that this is now the retail price. So if we fall away from it, is it possible we'll check it? Let's see. No, I don't know. I don't even remember what happened here. I don't remember, so, you know. We didn't. 
it's okay. Well, let me get back here. I'm trying to see where I am. So too high. Okay, watch. So this is the liquidation. Okay. Now this is where we get interesting. Now the initial balance, let me explain what this is. Remember the statistics, I always talk about these and write this down and please take notes because I think, you know, this is a different way to uh, look at the market. So if you want to, you know, the time we spend together, if you're interested in getting the most out of this, you're going to notice I repeat things. And the reason I do is because this is a generic fractal process. It happens in all time frames. So I kind of repeat it because it's a matter of, at least for me, I needed repetition um, to learn. And, um, you know, but it's the fractal nature. So you're going to see the auction in all time frames. But let's, we're staying in a little higher time frame right now. So this is called the naked volume point of control. Now, let me tell you, naked, you know, oh, but um, it was the where the most volume traded yesterday. This was considered the retail price, right? High volume plus price is retail at the time. Remember, this is yesterday. So if the market thought it was fair yesterday, we have a possibility to go do a price check in aisle three. Isn't it interesting? So, and let me go back, initial balance high, initial balance low. There's a 90% prob over a 90% probability that either the RTH first hour high or low will get taken out. And of course, we don't know which one, right? So, uh, past performance, not necessarily indicative of future results. I'm required by the regulators to say that. So, price check in aisle three. price check in aisle three. What did we do in the higher time frame at 4016? Price check in the big aisle. Are you guys tracking? Do you see something happening? Now what? Let's look. Are you guys with me so far? I just want to make sure. It's, this is fractal, and this is the point I'm trying to make, and I'm going to go slow. Now, where are the stops? VWAP. I don't know if this is the current mid. I don't think so. Let's go back. Watch. The VWAP. And where's the retail price here? Price check, maybe. Let's see. Okay, watch what happens here. We come up towards it, we don't touch it. Price check, so price check in aisle three in, in yes, yesterday's retail. Today's retail developing here doesn't make it. Watch what happens. The market is trading, you know, this is our rotations, who knows, right? The volume point and control moves down. What is that saying? Potentially, underline this is too high. I mark them. By the way, they're not marked here because I'm marking them on my other book map, which is the one I'm, you know, active with. And I call it a variable high volume node. All this is, I don't want to forget that it happened. It's saying is the participants think that price at this time is too high. So I mark it. Are you guys with me? Does it make sense? And don't forget, after we get into this, I'll get back into real time with you guys. How are we doing in YouTube? Make sure nobody's passed out yet. Okay. So... Too high. Volume point of control, of course, moves down. 
All right, retail. So retail, and don't, this is kind of like, no, we're not paying this. We like this price better. Intersection of, right, volume and price. What does it do? Moves down again. So what do I, what am I seeing happen? This is the auction. Well, too high, too high. I got to mark this one. Variable high volume node. I just have a process I follow. Remember, I don't know what's going to happen. Right? I know I don't know. Write that down. You don't know. I don't know. Or if you know, you got to send me a, a direct a message and we'll talk. So, um, and now what's, what's happening is volume and price are moving together. What it is saying based on auction principles, too high, too high, and we're moving down. So this is suggesting to me the potential to go lower. Now, again, I have no idea, so don't think I know. So watch the behavior. Price check in aisle three, right here. You see this? What happened was retail. Let's go back and check this price. This is almost like, um, I always think about it as a price check in aisle three because basically the participants at this time weren't willing to pay this price. They weren't willing to pay that price. But the market has the potential, price check in aisle three, to come back and just make sure. Is this really too high? Uh, I don't know. Let's go. Boom. Back. Price check. Watch. Now, we don't know. Oh. So, price check. Price check. Too high? Perhaps. Price check. Too low? Perhaps. Price check. Let's go back here. Go to aisle four for a change. Price check. Too high. Is everybody tracking? Can you see what's going on? How about in YouTube? Is this logical? The market speaks. The market is going to check levels. We don't know if, how, when. We know nothing. What we know is what happened in this short time frame. And the nature of the auction is to check. And we don't know, right? Look how close these are. Too high, fair price. Chop, chop, chop. Maybe too low. That's why it comes back. Ah, maybe too high. Comes back. Maybe too, and we don't know. Ah, maybe too low. Well, maybe this one's not too high. Let's go check this one. See? That's what creates this. It's an auction. So what happens right here? I'm going to take you now into microstructure. Is everybody tracking? I need to know because I don't want to go on. Because this is big time stuff, guys. If you can get this and think. Remember, it's um, we don't know what the market's going to do, but it provides us with a lot of insight into what it might do. And that creates locations based on your trade plan to potentially interact. Does that make sense? So remember, nobody knows, you know? And if you guys figure out how to know, like I say, dial me up. Love to have a conversation. Now, there's something else I want to show you. I got to go back up here. Remember, this was our target. That's the high of the day. That's luck, guys. Don't think it's anything more than that. Now, you may think that there's precision, but there's no precision. It's just maybe. This up here, remember I said, is an auction. And you see how the volume tapered off? That's showing you less and less interest as we're going higher. Now we fell out of it. And now we're auctioning in this. 
right? This is too high, too low, too high, too low, okay? So now again, we don't know what it'll do, but this is an outside edge, and this we know, unless things change, was too high because that's where the retail price was, and now we went down, we checked down here, we checked this one, and now we're checking this one. It's aligned with yesterday's high, you know. So we have confluence of items. Now I'm going to take you inside. So now we're going down to a smaller time frame. And why would I do that? And why would I potentially consider a short? Let's go back. I hit my upside target. We sold off. I've fallen out of this area up here. My volume point of control shifted down, showing me that potentially these levels, this one and this one, are too high. Now, I don't know. But the alignment with this one is at this outside edge. See? So it's if this, then that. If not, then what? If we don't get below here, then what? Then what? Then how about check? Check. And if I don't get out here, then I have the potential to rotate and come all the way down to the other side. So let's look in here. I want to make sure, guys, I'm, I'm taking the time with this, and it's not about my time. It's about we don't get, you know, we have something happening today in multiple time frames. And when that happens, it gives us a real opportunity to see how the auction works and those of you guys who are swing traders, option traders, uh, whatever, you know, whatever your thing is, this is how you use this process for the, to participate in these higher fractals. All I do is look inside the developing time frame, and then I go in and look at the same process in a microstructure, and you'll see the same thing. It is a generic process. If you can think in fractals using a similar process, you really will understand it. Then it's a matter, you know, of just really getting that recognition. And that takes time. So let's go take a look inside. Remember, location, right? And the high, 06. Now, remember, it's ballpark. You know, there's no precision in trading. If we had that, uh, it'd be easy, wouldn't it? Let me see if I can put the... Okay, here. Chop, chop. So, too high. Watch. Too low. Watch. Here's our location. Too high. Alignment. Alignment. Right here. This is your, this is a consolidation, right? Chop, 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 chop. Right in here is our area to observe. Let's look. Now I'm in a fractal. This is like getting your microscope out. Chop, chop, chop. 81 stops go off here. This is how I use, now watch, this is how I use the stop uh, add-on the stop iceberg detector and remember who we trading against retail traders is this going higher how do I know well I see 81 I see 179 that's big number well I can't get involved here 16 is this the high no it goes higher 81 more stops I can't get involved there pullback three stops here hmm but it's not a new high new high bing 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 what's that one indicator 101 and this is not an indicator this is just giving us the tags that are on the trades this is called market by order data it's available um, through the CME and rhythmic and it gives us shows us the tags and basically the tag on this guy was a stop 
And then, so if stops are buyers, right? If I don't get more buyers, aggressors above here, this is potential exhaustion. Then what? Break lower exhaustion. This is my trigger. Now, what's inside of this? Volume. There, right here, and here. So it sees the volume here, which is a micro thing. I got to tell you, I can't do anything with this until it breaks. Now I'm looking for a pullback to where? The volume. So let's see. And remember, there's no precision in trading. At best, it's maybe. Right here, right here. This is my entry. My risk is over here. Six. So let's assume I'm in it here, three and a half. Is that a viable risk? I ask. So high volume. And let me, here's the generic aspect of this. This is an auction as much as this whole day is an auction. The volume point of control is the fair price at the moment for this whole day, developing day. This is your high volume right here, 10,000 contracts. In the microstructure right here, we have the same behavior. This little high volume of 1,500 contracts sitting over here, 1,600 contracts, is just like the VPOC over here. Is that logical? Same behavior. So imagine this little thing up here is like your convenience store down the street. And, you know, high price, right? And auction, auction, retail, break away, too high. You notice the behavior in this time, the bigger time frame, too high. Right? That was a previous VPOC location that we left behind that we just checked. Microstructure, just like your VPOC, break away from it. Come back and check from below. Isn't that the same as coming back to check this from below? Is everybody tracking? Isn't it something? What do you guys think? If you think this is useful uh, in YouTube, give me a, a thumb. Hopefully up. So, oh, thanks, guys. Uh, so, this is how I slice and dice. So, the thing is, remember, the interaction between buyers and sellers is fractal. So, think of this as your little convenience store. This process of break retracement to this high volume, this is like your VPOC, is the same process as break retracement to here. Same. So if you understand this and you understand why we came to this, it's all the same. Can you see it? It's like those Russian dolls. They're inside, inside, inside. So you guys who want to swing trade, you got it. You guys who want to uh, trade intermediate time frame, you got it. And what was my target coming down? Remember? The high volume, and I showed this to you. I just want to bring you back. On the short, where were we going? Here. 67 half. So, high time frame. Here, target coming up. Yesterday and the day before, that volume created a fair price. That's a consolidation. They overlap, right? 67.5. So short, and I got you so right, took the short here. Done. Doesn't mean anything. 
I'm just showing you how to kind of organize it. And I hope you find some value in this. Hope you guys in YouTube are kind of getting, the, as they say, the lay of the land. What I find really interesting is because I understand the auction and you can too, I can use the in all time frames, I can be operating against this time frame, which was my target and potentially a short. And I can tell you, not for me, but once I see the behavior change and we get into this two sided thing, right? This is called balance. This is a different context. So if I perceive now both sides are active, which is what creates this rotation, this kind of a thing, because this is too high, too low, too high, right? I'm not paying that. Oh, yeah, but I like it. Fair price. Well, if I go up to the next higher time frame, if I fall out of this, and remember the initial balance, remember that, guys? First hour, high or low, over 90% probability, one of them will go. If I hit my major target up top, do you think it makes sense to think about a short? Unless we get back. I mean, and of course, we could take this out and go north, you know, right? We know that. But what's the auction saying? Let's go back. Too high, too high, fair price. Price check in aisle three. Bing, bang. Price check in aisle three, outside edge. Too high short got it then what ib stat then what south to the next to 60 well wherever right is this logical that is correct jim if you're a swing trader you would be looking to get a short here and you'd be looking for the next higher time frame down, which was whatever, 67-ish, whatever, 67 half. Is that work? Or you're like me, and you put the short on, and you go for the same target. And there's probably more in the game, but that's not part of what I worry about. You see, I just trade targets. Somebody else, you always got to leave some for the sweeper, right? Do we have any questions? Well, let me show you a couple other things here too while we're at this. So short scale price check. See, in other words, short scale, scale number one, then I be low. Now watch this right here. Watch. Just watch. What is this? Break. Now forget we have this. We're working with this thing. 90% probability. But what is this? Price check in aisle three. Is this still too high? What is this? Watch. Does this look familiar? Does this look familiar? Does this look familiar? Are you guys tracking? You guys see alignment and I'm using a, a singular process to dance with the market in all in multiple time frames but the same process this is kind of what uh, why you kind of see me what appears to well a repetitive process because the process is generic it really is the market is continually auctioning in all fractals that's why I don't like calling them time frames but you know that's kind of what we all started out with was time you know, but it's not time. So let's look right here. Let's open this up just to see.
Now remember, nobody knows. It could also come all the way back around because this is balance. But what we did is we broke away. And remember, what's the purpose of the, of the market? What's fair? What's unfair? So if this is retail, what the market is doing, if it comes back, and again, remember, nobody knows. So don't think anybody knows anything here. Right, because the point is we don't know. All you have is maybe. So let's look. This is a one lot. So twelve stops went off up in here, and this is a one lot. I I call that Louis with the one lot. That's Louis. We haven't had Louie here for a while, but I'm bringing him back. So that's Louie. And again, we don't know. Price check in aisle three. Are we going to blow through it? Don't know. So let's look. Chop. Chop. We only had a one lot up here. Now, for me, this is a possibility to initiate here or not. Now, if I'm already in this thing from 06 um, area, nobody gets 06 on the button, and I scaled coming down, then I, you know, but I want to see the behavior, but I want you to see the behavior. Chop, chop break pull back check break chop 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 break pull back check this is where the volume is see what happens this guy comes in that gives a little kick in the pants too but this is i'm just showing you behavior if you can start reading it now here's the the caveat you're going to see auctions if you will in the microstructure everywhere like here break pullback right here notice this up chop chop break pullback this guy comes back in this is order flow that kind of gives the market a little kick not a recommendation I'm just saying uh, but this is not, you know, this could be an area to get involved if you weren't in or to add up to you. What's your trade plan? So let's watch. Now, remember, uh, I've got an IB stat down here somewhere, wherever it is. Yeah, this, and then my target below. So let's just watch the behavior, and then we'll try to get into real time. Over 90% probability, right? So that's done. Now let's watch. And there's another setup. And by the way, those of you, if you haven't done it, if you uh, come over to the Trader Lab in the Bookmap Discord chat, uh, there's about 60 PDFs pinned to the top of that Trader Lab chat that shows all these kinds of behaviors. Um, so you can kind of look at them and study them a little bit and see if you can kind of make sense out of it. This is also a short here against the it's check in aisle three right too high break below check from below too high IB potential short right here let's go look I still hope you guys find this useful because um, I know I'm spending a lot of time on it but I want you to see how you put these pieces together so IB low, 90% probability, break, what happens, potential profit taking, or not, pullback, here's volume, you can see it right there, this is your area, that we're under here, this is the area, chop, 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 Louis with the one lot, I don't know. I got this little micro auction here. This is your retail, too high. 
right there. Can you guys see the high volume note? No, I don't know. So don't think I know anything. I don't know. But I get exhaustion. Louis with the one lot and one stop. Remember, stop divergence. Remember, high volume. Little Like your little retail auction in here. Too high. Exhaustion coming back. Too high. But I don't know. Break. Okay. Now what? Where's the volume? See that little node? That's like your little VPOC in here. Right here. Break. Pullback. Price check in the micro aisle down the street at your convenience store. Too high. Short. Where's our target? Everybody remember? Wasn't it 60 something or other or 69? I don't know. Can't remember. But you know what I'm saying. Right? Down here. I think that'll kind of do it. What do you think? Any questions? The um, Asante, the IB low is the first hour high and low of RTH. Um, oh boy, this is na was narrated in the uh, Trader Lab. Uh, yeah, Mike, uh, I use the microstructures because it's the same thing uh, in all time frames or fractals, which is the appropriate term for it. Um, I'm what I'm doing here in the stream and you know this all happened as you guys know in fact I was as I was doing the stream I was telling you what the target was we hadn't even gotten there yet so um, you know but uh, I do not this is not a trade calling room I don't do it that's just not my thing and uh, there's regulatory reasons for that too so uh, but I do narrate um, the auction in the trader lab when I'm not streaming when, and for those of you who are wondering, I uh, go back at times when it's appropriate, and other times I just stay in real time. Uh, but I do not call trades. Absolutely not my intent, and uh, we don't do it. That's that. Oh, come on. It's always nice when nothing is working. Come on, let's go. Okay. So this is the target on the downside. Now, for those of you, now I have no idea what the market's going to do from here. It could, and in fact, uh, if I look at a higher time frame, hold on a second, uh, we could uh, fall back inside this whole structure. Um, let me just pull this chart up again for you guys to see it. This is the higher time frame that we've been talking about for probably weeks, right? Um, and this was the target, which is here, right? And this was the target coming up. This was the target coming back down. This was created before today because it's these two days. This is the high volume. So this is retail in this time frame. If we fall out of this, we can come back here. Not a recommendation, just saying. We can also consolidate in here. You know, so I don't know. You know, that part is not uh, for me to determine, as they say, not my job. Does that make sense? Oh boy, is this helping you or is this a waste of our time? Just let me know. Because uh, I'm not interested in wasting my time or anybody else. So just let me know.
just want to know. So this is where these levels come from. And if you've been following the stream, we've been talking about this for a long time. The short up here, if you guys remember, which, and this is all from, you know, previous, we talked about it, this was the target. And so you know, nobody knows. So there is no way to know. So we had this short, and you notice the high volume node right here, which I can, it's covered up. That was the high of the day. This was the low of the day. And again, you know what? It's random. And if you got to accept randomness. This price check in the big aisle. This return price check in the big aisle. This is all I need to do. I don't need to do anything more than this. By the way, there might be more. And that doesn't bother me. Because the market is long. And where are the stops under here? This outside edge. But we might not get there, right? So for me, it's higher time frame here to here and I did not get that because I'm you know the high of the day is not my thing you know so but now I'm gonna be looking for this 04 07 08 back on the downside if we come out of here we can sit in here and rotate right we're back here we can come down to the outside edges remember too high too low too high so we just check retail and this consolidation that's what this is so in the microstructures at 06 we saw the short in the higher structure we did a price check logical simple random so anyway hope you got something out of it my time is just about up I don't think I have much more to show you because now it's going to be rotational and this is more of a scalpateria. But let me show you what you have. We're below the first hour's low. We're below the highest uh, volume from yesterday. Too high. We went off that uh, 4016. Too high. We came down to the target below. Don't know. Are we done? And now we're going to rotate. See this fat thing over here? This is called the distribution. It is a, look at what it is. So, you know, consolidation. See, chop, 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 right? That means the shoppers, too low, too high. And there's your high volume. In this auction, this is retail. This is your fair price at the moment. Now remember what the market can do. It can come up, it can come back, it can come back here or not, or continue south of the border. And you know that's not my job to know that. But I will say, where is it too expensive? Outside edge. Where are stops? Outside edge. Let me explain, as long as we're hanging out, what's going on and what the profile is telling me. Remember? Chop, chop, chop. We had the short, right? Break. Pull back. That was a potential short or not. Doesn't matter to me. I'm just showing you structure. Chop, chop, auction, break, pull back, short, too high, and then the micro time frame, too high, break, target, here, finito, chop, chop. Now, let me show you this. You see where we broke away and then we ran? That is not an auction. This is what an auction looks like. Chop, 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 right? Too high, too low, too high. But both sides. Break away, no auction. Run. That creates something called a low volume area or node. And this is a low volume area. You see how it curves in, rips, and then starts auctioning again? In this area, which are outside edges, are stops. If we rotate back up, and what can happen is we come up in here, and since it's an outside edge, you pop stops. And then if there's no follow-through, we get continuation with what per 
potentially is the trend, which is down. So, so this is how an auction works. And now we can slice and dice it down to top fractals. So let's go look. I hope you get something out of this. Anyway, this is what I do. And again, it's not a recommendation. You know, I have no idea of, you know, anything. But this is the mechanics of the market. And all this is doing is using what the market is. The, the basic function of the market is to find a fair price. And it's going to run all over the place trying to figure out where that is. And the way it finds it is it's the interaction between the buyers and the sellers. You know? And at times, we can identify that behavior, and if we can identify it, then we can interact with it if it's, if it's aligned with our, uh, call them setups, right? By the way, if you're interested in any of this, I invite you to the Trader Lab. Um, there's PDFs, about 60 of them, of different configurations of how this might interact. Also, there's an introductory video I did last year for Bookmap in their, one of their advanced trader webinars, about an hour, which gives you an overview of this thing. You know, auction market theory, volume profile, and specific, uh, pointing out specific behaviors that you will see, uh, which are very similar to what you're seeing here. But with a lot of detail and minutia, circles and arrows, that kind of thing. To so see if there's anything else I could show you. Let's just see. See this here? Chop, chop. Now, where am I? Towards an outside edge. See, chop, chop, break high, break low. Fine. Can't do anything with that. Come back out, outside edge, see the stops, picks the stops, stop pick, alignment with liquidity, just saying. But here's the key component, this. Let me take it back here so we could just see what it looked like at the time. So at the time, we fell out of this. There's your low volume node, chop, chop, break, pull back. Where are we? Coming to an outside edge, low volume. We're rejecting this distribution. In other words, this uh, distribution equals consolidation. Okay, too high. So now we're auctioning this thing. Okay, outside edge. So now I'm looking, I got this, and I know I have stops. In, remember, in this. Because this is where we broke out, and what's at the outside edges of consolidation? Stops, right? Everybody's trailing their stop. Retail trader behavior. So again, I have no clue. So don't think I know anything, because I don't. So here, I see the stops. I see the book. So watch. Here's your high volume. Here's your outside edge. This is where your risk is. This is your pullback to this volume, which is in here. If that's part of your plan, this is a triggering structure. Again, these are not trade recommendations. I'm just sharing the auction and how you might integrate it into your plan. I want to invite you guys, uh, if you haven't... Uh,
The open invitation is for the Traders Roundtable. It's going to be tomorrow, 10A to 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be exclusively in the Traders Lab. It's not going to be on YouTube. Um, it's where you can bring questions. Um, and I can tell you that two hours is going to fly. Uh, if you're interested, go to bookmap.com and you can join the trader lab you don't have to be a bookmap subscriber um, it's an interactive group of traders um, a great group um, we have uh, it's collaborative in other words we bring our collective experience with the goal of getting better uh, currently uh, we're setting up a uh, research group into trade management uh, that will uh, work together uh, along with me uh, to bring potential solutions. Uh, trade management is an issue that I think uh, you know, every trader should be interested in, and there's no one way or right way to do it. A lot of that is sort of time frame, fractal, you know, um, oriented. Uh, and there's no secret sauce when it comes to a lot of this. Uh, as you know, I don't use any indicators, but when it comes to trade management, it is structured in the sense of having a process you can measure. Now, the whole key of having a trade plan is you have a consistent process. If you have a random process, uh, you probably won't be in the business very long uh, because you can't quantify it. Uh, randomness is really our enemy. The market's random. So randomness times randomness equals chaos. So for me, that's why targets are kind of the way I work, because I can kind of measure these things. I can't me the fact if it goes you know, down to 50 from here uh, is not my concern. Um, 4006-ish, you know, down to whatever, 69, 67, 50, wherever it was, um, is fine with me, you know. That's all. So um, you guys, you're welcome. Uh, go to bookmap.com. By the way, you don't have to be a subscriber. You won't be solicited. And you'll have access to a lot of free education on order flow. You'll have education on stocks, you know, uh, multiple time dimensions, you know, kind of like what I do. Uh, also other approaches, uh, crypto. Uh, if you like cues, you like options, what's your thing? Financial products, uh, all different ways and different tools. And that's all part of the uh, what Bookmap offers. It's really pretty amazing. They used to charge for this. You had to be a subscriber. But uh, currently it's available to everybody. And I kind of think, uh, as my mother used to say, free is good. So uh, register. Go to bookmap.com if you're interested in the roundtable. Um, come to the Trader Lab. Uh, we have traders in there. I think our senior trader has 54 years of trading. Makes me look like a puppy. And, um, and then newer traders, too. But it's a collective experience. It's a great group. If, um, you know, trading is kind of an isolated experience, you know, we kind of all live under a rock. Uh, think about when you got involved in trading, the fantasy of what it was. And if you've been doing this for a while, there's a really a different reality to it. And no one can relate to it unless they've done it. No one understands the psychological issues that you will discover about yourself that you've never had to face before. Because we bring an experience from our, quote, outside world and lives, and we think we can fit trading around that. The reality is we have to change our behavior in order to interact with the market. The things that protect us outside, the fight or flight, and all those triggering mechanisms are actually the enemy to being a successful trader. So not only do we talk about the mechanics and uh, behaviors of the market, we talk about the psychology and the obstacles that we all collectively face as traders. You're not unique, believe me. Uh, the thing is, you just may not know that this, a lot of these elements that you wrestle with are just part of the process of becoming a trader. So uh, thanks again for being here. I look forward to seeing you uh, tomorrow in the Trader Lab. Uh, it will not be streamed. It will not be recorded. Uh, it's just going to be a, an audio interaction. Uh, I will be answering questions. You can post them. I also want to let you know that since the time is limited, I will try to focus on questions that will be most beneficial uh, to the group. Uh, there's an unlimited number of you that can come in and uh, get on the Discord uh, audio stream uh, so there's no limits 
thanks again. Have a great weekend. If I don't see you, uh, we'll be back here uh, next week.